Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, first of all, I would like uh, to thank the organizing committee who uh, invited me to share some of the knowledge and the new concept of uh, One Health with our colleague from the Zoom. I think maybe someone think, uh, what is One Health? Is that the new species of animal that we introduce into the zoo or what else? So uh, I think many of you heard about this uh, concept of One Health. Some may not and some heard but don't know what to do about the One Health, uh, how it can work in the zoo. So today I will try to uh, give you some uh, introduction and then after that I think the uh, speaker after me will give more uh, details on that. So, uh, as you know that in, in, uh, uh, since decades ago, we fight with many, many diseases, new diseases or we call it emerging diseases, which uh, occur and happen and transmit from animal to human. And more and more is coming. And as WHO said that, in the future, uh, the infectious disease of human, more than 70% will be from uh, animals, and most of them from wildlife. And as we work with the wildlife in captivity, we should concern with this zoonotic disease. So we can divide zoonotic disease in three groups of them, uh, the neglected endemic zoonosis, uh, emerging zoonosis, and uh, foodborne disease. <clears throat> and as you know that uh, in the uh, environment, we have the interface of uh, uh, human, animal, and environment all together. And in the group of the animal, they can divide into domestic and wildlife, which have uh, interaction and share some of the uh, pathogen together. And in, in the uh, ecosystem, you can see that uh, interact among humans, domestic animal and wildlife. We share the same climate, we share the ecosystem, and in those overlap, it should have something that can help us in solving those uh, problem of health which we call that uh, One Health. So, what is One Health? It is uh, the definition that uh, bring in One Health is a collaborative effort of multiple disciplines working locally, nationally, and globally to obtain optimal health for people, animals, and our environment. This is uh, adopted by the ABMA and for to make it uh, easy or simple, you can see that One Health is the how to work together to solve the health problem with three legs, which is one is from the animal health, another one human health, and the third one is environmental health. And these have to uh, work all together. It is a working principle. It is not just uh, to say that, okay, we love One Health if you do this, but you have to do it and approach the problem with this concept. Sorry for the, uh, this not sharp. You can see that uh, in the public health, you can see animal health, environmental health, and human health, they have the overlap here, which is do, look like very small. But for in one health approach, we bring those three circles together, close, very close. That means we work closely with three parties at least. And we concern firstly with the zoonotic disease. Zoonotic disease that means is from disease from uh, animal to human. And another side, not just only from animal to human, but in opposite side, is from 
human to sue animal to, which is can our sue animal can get disease from visitors as well as workers, keepers, and so on. It's called the uh, anthropogenic disease, which is quite new. So we don't just thinking of ourselves, but we think thinking about our animal and also our environment. So you can see in this group in the zoo. From the zoo animals, the on the visitor side, you can see that they can get diseases from those animals by direct contact, indirect contact, or vector bond contact. And by the way, the worker, which include the keeper, a veterinarian, and so on in the zoo, they also can get disease from those animals. And these come to the environment finally, within the trash, with or vehicles, and also in the soil or in the carcass. So this is uh, uh, if something affect, it will also have the domino effect with the other. So this is a news from the telegraph. Uh, this is uh, 14 lions killed at Iran zoo over infection fears. They were euthanized because yes, uh, they have some uh, infection. Oh, sorry. With the glander of a infection, which is very uh, dangerous agent. And this also, uh, they have to utilize uh, the Siberian tiger too because they have uh, uh, also infected and aware of the spreading of this disease. And this is also the zoonotic disease, which is the uh, uh, we uh, not really found. And as you know, in all the reptiles in the zoo, one of the most important is salmonellosis. And it's very simple and very easy to infect to human and even to transmit to other animals in the uh, in captivities. So annual checkup should be conducted, the swap and do some culture, or even though you can get it from others, uh, large reptile, or even though the small one, and others. And uh, one more example that uh, show about the zoonotic uh, disease, which is very important, is West Nile virus uh, outbreak in the U.S. This is a very popular model for the one health. And these were uh, identified by the uh, pathologist from the Soviet Union. And this disease is a, a very, very uh, uh, dangerous and many people die in the U.S. It's just that from the death of the coach in the nitrogen in the park and finally um, the wet can diagnose as a West Nile virus. And more detail will be in the next uh, lecture. And the occurrence of the zoonotic infections in the zoo, the E. coli, which is very common um, pathogen, and is spread very well and very easy from uh, fecal oral route. And for the type of uh, 0157, this infection occurs in the petting zoo. I think many zoo have a petting zoo. And sometimes we don't take much care of hygiene and uh, uh, aware of the zoonotic disease. It mainly uh, children can pluck from the petting zoo. And they found about this uh, E. coli outbreak uh, in North Carolina Fair and in Arizona Zoo. <coughs> and I do believe that, that if we swap and culture from those waste or even though from those animals in the zoo, you can get this kind of uh, pathogen. And 
Shikelosis in Vienna Zoo. In the Barbary macaque, they have a Shikela. The Shikelosis can also cause sickness in the human and cause fatal to human too. It's very dangerous too. And also some keeper, uh, they got sick with the uh, uh, salmonella. Rabies virus also uh, happened in the, the petting zoo and in the black bear cup. They live with people and finally died. More than 400 animal a uh, person supposed to contact with those uh, cup. Silpox virus is by the staff in the uh, marine research, uh, marine mammal research and they cause the smallpox, the, which we call the seal pox. So reducing the risk of those zoonosis, firstly, we have routine disease prevention activity as well as an action plan for crisis. We have to bring zoo worker, occupational physician, operating officer, and wait from the zoo to work together on that. And routine surveillance and recog uh, recognition, understanding of zoonotic disease. Veterinarian and the physician is the first guy who can tell that those people get the, those disease or have the outbreak. And the second line that will be the scientists, which include biologists, microbiologists, help you in identify the disease. And also molecular biologists, epidemiologists, help you in the epidemiological study. So they have to work Together. This is an uh, example in the West Nile virus surveillance system in the zoological collection. It happened during the West Nile virus outbreak in uh, America. You can see that many zoos have to work, uh, sorry, work together and work with university and have some database and work with the human side, USCDC. And even though for H5N1 outbreak, or even the other uh, avian influenza. Surveillance system in Su or in Park is very important, as well as in Thailand, that we uh, have those problems in the past. So many Su issue the protocol to combat with those things, like this one. Or in which the Su, health and safety at the Su is include and have to work closely with the outside which is a physician. Yeah, some of the uh, protocol. And now, one health go to the zoo. They provide education of concerning to one health to the zoo and in the zoo. So the visitor, the children can learn about one health in the zoo too. So you can see that this is a big collaboration from uh, human side, CDC, NIH, livestock side, uh, agriculture and environment, university and zoo people. This is a warning card for the medical personnel about the disease that zoo people or people who visit the zoo can get it. Yeah, in Thailand we have one health network setting up and the zoo also play a major one of the major role in this kind of thing. So we do hope that this will uh, boost you up to learn more about one health and try to have it in your zoo. So this is the challenge and let's do it. Thank you.